All right, guys, welcome back to another Grow the Earth. And first of all, I want to start off by thanking you guys, especially the guys from the last video who, who subscribed and you guys liked. You really showed out in just unimaginable way. And I want to thank you guys for that. If for anybody watching this video, if you're not subscribed, please, please subscribe to my channel. You know, here I, I do this because I love to do this, because it's a hobby, because it's things that I want to do but it wouldn't hurt to get paid for it too. So if you guys can like, si subscribe, share, you know, that whole nine yards, I'd really appreciate it. Um, you know, cause eventually it's going to help me come into an area to where I might be able to substitute some of this stuff that I'm doing daily with, you know, someone else's money other than my own. But now that we're done with that, let's get to what we've got on tap for today. Today, we're gonna be talking about carrots. And I'm gonna go through everything you, should, you would need to know to grow good, bountiful harvest of carrots and what you should expect whenever you go to harvest those carrots. So the first thing we should probably start off with is when you decide to grow carrots, right? Now you need to decide what kind of carrots you, you want because there are there's as many different types of carrots as there is types of tomatoes. All right, you know, just like this variety that I've got right here, you know, this is actually a small ball carrot. Now, when you think of carrots, you think of the carrots you grow in your, you see in your grocery store, which are, you know, eight, 10, 12 inches long. Well, these guys are only gonna be about the size of a ball. You know, one of the varieties that we're gonna grow here today is a small Nance, which is right here. And these things only top out about four or five inches long. And, uh, you know, uh, you even have varieties like these. Uh, you know, this has got multiple varieties in it. And it's, you know, there are purple, there are black, there are red, there are green. Actually, one of the varieties that we're growing today is an atomic red. It looks like this. So, you know, as you go to buy carrots, you know, don't be stuck into the fact that you think that, you know, the variety that you see in the stores of varieties you need, to, you need to put in the garden, but also you need to be expectant that not every carrot is gonna turn out to the one like what you look in the store. The reason I grow the varieties I grow are not for, you know, that they look like the carrots in the store, but because the ones that I grow actually have more flavor. They taste better, they're crisper, they have a, a better mouthfeel things like that, then of course what you buy in the store, which is entirely different. Now there are quite a few different things that go into growing carrots, and one of those is gonna be your soil. Now soil has a lot of different aspects. Your soil is gonna be not only what it feels like, because one of the, the key facts about growing carrots is you need a nice, loose soil. Because so, of course carrots are a root vegetable, so whenever they grow, they grow from the top down. And if they run into, as they're growing down, if they run into a rock, they will deviate and they will go around that rock. If they hit hard ground, they're going to stop. They're not gonna to continue to try and grow down into a hard soil, or it's gonna very, very limit what, how far they're gonna go down. So even though you planted a variety of carrot that's gonna to grow to be 10, 12 inches long, if you've got really hard soil or soil that it can't grow into only four or five inches down, guess what? That carrot's gonna be four or five inches long and then more than likely, instead of being long and about the size of your thumb, it's gonna be long and about the, this big around. And so carrots will adjust to the spaces they have. Second thing is gonna be fertilizer. For carrots, do not use your regular you know, if you're a non-organic gardener, don't use your standard 10-10-10. You're gonna end up with a lot of greenery and hardly any carrot, because that's what's gonna happen. That carrot, a carrot's job is not to produce a long piece of fruit, per se. Their job is to reproduce, just like every other vegetable that we grow in our garden. So if you give that thing a lot of nitrogen, it's gonna grow a lot of greenery so you can make a lot of seed. So 
what we have to do is we have to kind of help that plant do what we want it to do, help that root vegetable grow by limiting the nitrogen and then building up our phosphorus and our, 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 our P and our K of our NPK. Because that is what is going to help us grow nice big roots. So just as what you would do for a, even a, a bulb, you know, what you would uh, put in for uh, potatoes, what you would put in for any other type of root vegetable that grows below the ground, that is what you want to use. You want a lower N number and a higher P and a higher K number. Also, if you have something that has calcium, boron, or uh, magnesium, those three elements are gonna help these things grow better too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring you in closer. We're gonna mix in this, uh, this fertilizer and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do to plant. All right, now the fertilizer that I'm gonna use is a 444. Um, it also has some calcium, it's got some boron, it's got some magnesium in it. So this is gonna do real well for all of my carrots. Now, you really, it's kind of hard to say. I mean, you can go overboard with your fertilizer, especially if you are using a commercial fertilizer that is not organic. The reason is, is the fertilizer that is not organic actually is full of acids and things like that. It's a, it's a, uh, you know, a phosphated version of whatever that may be that you're trying to add to your soil. If you're trying to add nitrogen, you're, add, you're adding nitrogen sulfate, which is a salt. If you are adding, you know, potassium, you're adding, you're adding potassium sulfate, which is a salt. And what those salts tend to do when you get them in too large of a quantity inside of your garden bed is they actually lock those nutrients up. Now, one of the benefits, one of the benefits of having organic material and using organic fertilizers is all of your organic fertilizers are a slow release fertilizer. So there are no chances of you burning your plants. There are no chances of you saturating your soil to the part, the point to where you're gonna lock those nutrients in your soil. You know, it's, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's all around better for your plants and for your soil, which is why I only use organic stuff in my garden. Now, once we've got this, our soil, our, our fertilizer mixed in, and I'm only gonna do this area, I'll do the rest of that later off camera, is we're gonna make sure that we're really level, that we don't have any kind of big chunks of uh, wood material or anything like that. Um, you know, some is fine, and if it's really, if it's like this and it's kind of punky and you can kind of break it between your, e your fingers easily, it's fine, no big deal. But the soil has to be very loose because loose no soil is gonna make us grow nice. Those, those carrots are gonna have an easy time getting down through that soil. And now that we've got our fertilizer there, we can you know, make sure that once our roots start growing, once our carrots start growing, that they're gonna have everything they need in order to flourish, in order to grow really well. We're still gonna have our green, and that's why I use a 444, because we still need our green to be able to get the, the greenery on our plants, because that's what's gonna help feed our, our uh, root crop. But we don't want so much nitrogen that we just we just blow out the granary and we don't have, you know, the plant doesn't grow down, it doesn't grow the root. Now, there are 
kind of two different methods to planting carrots. You have your structured planting, and then you have what is kind of a, uh, a chaos method. Now this is what the wife has decided to put our seeds in, and these are actually some red carrots. And with a chaos method, you would just simply take this and you would just kind of sprinkle them every which way and then until you pretty much use your whole packet. Now, if you're like us and you don't plant like just a whole entire bed of carrots, that may work easier for you because now you don't have to worry about having old seed. But there are some, come, there are some caveats that come with doing your chaos method per se in the fact that wherever those seeds come up is where they're gonna be. And the problem with that is carrots need their space. They hate to be crowded. If you crowd them, they will, and I say will, they will grow poorly. You'll have greenery, but you will have no, no fruit below ground. You will not have that root crop because having another plant that close to it, it take one or the other will take up all of the nutrients and one will grow and the other one will not. They'll both grow mediocre or if there are not enough nutrients in that small space to support both of them, they will both grow poorly. So if you do your chaos method, then you've got to go back and you've got to thin those vegetables out, which means you've got to go back and make sure that you have about that much space around each one of those seedlings and any of them that are encroaching on that area, you've got to pull out. So if you have a hard time pulling out seedlings like my wife does, chaos method is not for you. You will have an issue because you letting all those grow is going to cause you to have poor production across all of your plants. So the method that I like to do is we go in with good seed and you're going to plant, basically kind of make a C with your fingers and poke the ground. That is going to be where you're going to plant your seeds. So basically, and the same thing on the width and then go down and that way you're not going to have any seed crowding. You're not going to have anything that you're going to have to go back. This is going to be a plant once, and you're not going to have to touch these again until it's time to until it's time to grow uh, to pull these out. So now that we've kind of got our spacing done here, and I'll do more later. These are our atomic red carrots. Now mind you, these seeds are super, super small. And what we're going to do is we're gonna take one to two, and we're gonna put them in each one of those divots that we just made. Now, if you put more than one by accident, not a big deal. It just means that you'll have to go back and either take some out, or when those plants start to come up, you're gonna to have to thin them out. You know, it's just uh, kind of the way things go. These things are very, very small, which is why the chaos method of planting these is so, so prevalent, because instead of trying to do this and meter them out, people would rather just kind of throw seeds at the ground and hey, I'll deal with that later. Then later comes and they don't want to deal with it. And then they say, oh, well, we'll just let them all grow. And then they wonder why they don't get really big luscious carrots. You know, it's just a, it's kind of a, you know, you got to pay me now or pay me later kind of thing. So I would rather do my work up front and not have to do it two or three times, right? You know, it's a, uh, you know, that old, uh, 
the old adage of whenever you're buying something, you know, buy once, cry once kind of thing. Well, this is do your work once and you won't have to cry about having to do it a second time around. So uh, now I, I did make divots here, but that was only for my spacing. Now I am not, and I repeat not, going to cover these carrots because, again, we go back to planning methods. What the hell? We go back to planting methods that you only want to plant your seed as long as the longest side on the fruit. And considering these are not, you know, they're maybe an eighth of an inch long, you don't want to plant them very deep because they're, they don't want to be deep because they will not, they won't flourish. So we're going to simply leave our seeds in these small divots like what I've got here. And we're just simply going to water them in just the, the way they are. All right, so now it's time to water. Now, one of the th bad things about carrots is, is they like to kind of move around. So when we water this stuff in, and you want to give this a good water in, is you want to kind of keep it like as a summer, spring rain. All right? Don't go in full force with your shower head or anything like that. We want a nice, gentle rain. And we want to do it really, really, really deep. Because we're going we're gonna to accomplish two things with this. We are going to get a nice, even soaking on our ground. And two, and two, we are going to water this deeply, which is going to allow that, that moisture to stay and help us get our carrots to grow. Now, as we're watering this in, you're going to realize that you can't see your carrot seeds anymore, and that's because they kind of naturally will kind of sink into the ground a little bit. Now, one of the tricks, one of the tricks to making sure that your seeds come up every time is we have to keep this moist. Now, if we can't keep it moist by watering it a ton, if you don't have some kind of a, you know, a misting system to keep your ground just entirely moist and wet, then what we've got to do is we've got to block our sun some way. Now, if you're in a regular bed and you're not in a raised bed like this is, you can just use a, basically a piece of plywood or a piece of cardboard. And what you're going to do is you're going to put that on there and you're going to shield it from the sun, which is going to allow that, 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 that soil to stay moist and wet and allow these things to germinate. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to check these carrot seeds after you've covered them and just leave them covered. They don't need any sunlight to grow. That initial burst of energy is going to come out of the seed. It doesn't need any sunlight to start growing. It needs sunlight after it gets greenery on it to help it convert sunlight into energy. But before that, it doesn't need any of that. So we're going to cover this with something, either uh, a, a piece of plywood. Uh, I'm actually going to use some of my black uh, row cover that I had such a hard time with on our beds. That's what I'm going to put over this. And that's going to completely darken this out. It's going to keep that moisture in there. And it's going to let them grow real nice. But after about four or five days, we're going to start checking this daily. Whatever you see that you've got, the majority of your plants have started to grow greenery out the top. We're going to take that away, and then we're just going to start watering on our normal schedule to let these grow. But in that first 14 to 30 days, we don't want this to dry out. If this dries out, they will die. They will, I, I promise me. I've killed more carrots because we weren't watering on a regular schedule than anybody you know. And if you water them on the regular and you get them, you know, uh, well-established, they will grow and they will, 
they'll do what you want and you'll have nice pretty carrots. If you don't water them, they're gonna die and you're gonna be replanting and hoping you can get enough time out of them before the freeze hits. Now, the reason that I'm planting this right now, because it's still in the 80s, we haven't hit quite fall yet. Uh, it's only getting down to like the 60s at night. The reason is because these carrots want a ground temperature of 60 to 70 degrees at least in order to germinate. If you try and germinate these in cold soil, they will not grow. So the heat that we're, gonna, that we're still having right now is gonna be fine once they, they start growing, they can survive all the way down to freezing. But if you don't have that initial burst of heat in order to get them started, you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna be out of luck. They're not gonna start, they're not gonna grow, or they're gonna have a really hard time germinating and then you're just gonna be lost on it. Uh, we can grow these here in the south, here along the Texas Gulf Coast, uh, pretty much from fall all the way around through spring and into the beginning of summer. Because, uh, you know, these things tolerate the cold well uh, and uh, they tolerate a little bit of heat. They can't make it through our summers, but through our falls and all the way through spring and into the beginning of summer, you're gonna be able to grow them just fine. These are, you know, typically these are a three month crop, you know, 60 to 90 days, depending on the variety. So realistically here in the South, we can get two harvests of these carrots. If we, you know, plant, harvest, and then turn around and replant, we can get a second harvest out of these before our summer really comes in hard at the beginning, you know, in mid-year. So guys, I thank you for tuning in for this. Thank you to those 30 some odd people who subscribed because right now as we sit, I'm at 760 subscribers. I was only at 730 something last, last week on my last video. So I appreciate all of you every day. And I just wanna say, pray over your family, pray over your garden, and have a great day.